welcome everybody to the Inner Carnivore podcast episode two. I have my guest here, Jessalyn Randall. Uh, super excited to have you on today. Uh, before we get into it, wherever you guys are listening, whether it's Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, or watching us on YouTube, uh, please do us a huge favor. Like the show, comment, share, uh, really, really helps us out. And so getting into it, how are you doing, Jess? I'm doing very good. Uh, so before we get into anything, before I ask you any questions, well, this is a question. How long did it take to get your mom to join you to do a bunch of your reels on social media? A couple of times. It, she was uncomfortable the first couple of times and she didn't want to be filmed. And then when people started saying, oh, give us more of your mom, she, she was like, oh, people like me and started getting more into it. That's awesome. I, I think the first one I saw was uh, when you guys did the oopsie pie yeah, one. And I was like, it looks like she's actually getting into it. Like, I love that. My mom would die. Like, be absolutely mortified and be like, mm -mm, absolutely not. So that's super cool. Uh, okay. So I know you've, I've seen some of the, the interviews that you've done and, and had you tell your story a little bit, but just for people who are hearing you for the first time, um, you started carnivore sounds like three plus years ago. So that was like ground zero carnivore, right? Like, that was like right when Sean Baker wrote his book. How did you hear about it? So to start? I, I heard about it from my husband who watched the Sean Baker, Joe Rogan podcast. And he showed it to me and said, hey, this sounds like a lot of the stuff that you're going through. And it sounds like it might be, like help you. So if you want to give it a shot, I'll do it with you. And we listened to it just before World Carnivore Month. So we both decided to do World Carnivore Month, January 2020. And after that, I never looked back. What issues were you? So I, I know anytime you're starting a diet, it's it's like for a couple of reasons people start either it's like you have some massive health issue that you have no other option or most people it's like ah i got these things that i'd like to i'd like to alleviate right what prompted you to say hey i'm gonna go for this because at the time even now it's like fairly extreme if you tell somebody hey i'm gonna eat a whole bunch of meat and that's about it so what what was your thought process on what prompted you to start that right exactly <laughs> oh, so the health issues I was dealing with, I, I, my main motivation for doing it was weight loss. I always struggled with weight loss and I thought my only solution was just absolutely killing myself in the gym and obsessing over calories and restricting calories. Cause in the past, the only time I ever could lose weight is if I starved myself and worked out like crazy, except that was never sustainable. Um, so because of that, I had a bunch of like mental health issues and like um, body dysmorphia and stuff like that. And uh, gut issues, I had a bunch of gut issues too, but my main motivation was weight loss. And I started, I lost weight, that worked, but then it healed my gut, which I need, I wasn't even expecting that to do. My mental health significantly improved. My uh, my face started clearing up. My skin, I had acne from sixth grade until I was 29 years old. And I started when I was 29. So uh, my skin started to clear up. And yeah, so those were the main things. was like skin, gut, mental health, weight. Gotcha. So you did it for 30 days, right? Yeah. 30 days in what what like definitive other than the weight loss what were your main takeaways on not only like the results you're getting but how you feel right because anybody can do a diet for 30 days i can do the most restrictive diet in the world and no matter the results if it is too restrictive after that 30 days all i want to do is eat everything that i haven't been able to eat and like i end up you just go the opposite direction so after 30 days what were you feeling well, yeah, I always, I did restrictive diets too before, and I had, I never had an issue sticking to a diet. I never struggled with like food, uh, 
addiction or anything like that. Um, so I stuck with it, but the main difference between this and what I had done before uh, was that like the other things that came along with it, like the mental health benefits were insane and my gut um, health was better than it had ever been. I was, I suffered from like extreme chronic constipation for my whole entire life to where I was only going to the bathroom once every like three weeks. So it was, oh, let me plug in my phone or my computer real quick. I'm sorry. So I had like extreme constipation and, um, and my mental health improved and it was just sustainable. Like I wasn't hungry. I wasn't having to like suffer because you know when you go on a diet and um and you just aren't eating enough and you just are struggling like that wasn't what carnivore did at all i'm so sorry let me go plug this in no, Wait, you're totally fine. i have one behind me there we go okay okay we're good so <laughs> that. I'll, I'll share my my thoughts also on the on the mental aspect of it um because i too have have uh experienced some of that benefit as well for people out there who don't equate diet to mental health like when you say my mental health improved like what do you mean like so if somebody's out there and they're like i'm not even sure i have a mental health problem right because a lot of it's undiagnosed and you just you're like i just don't feel good right so after 30 days what would you say was the difference mental health wise like what changed so for as long as I can remember, I always had really drastic mood swings and I was never diagnosed with anything, but that's because I didn't ever go to the doctor to try and get diagnosed with anything because my family has a history of like mental health issues. So I just thought it was a genetic thing. Um, but I always had extreme mood swings and anger issues and they were like violent. Like I would get violent with people and, um, and after the 30 days and i was also like i had body dysmorphia i was extremely insecure because of my skin i had i was like depressed and had anxiety um and i just never felt like i was really in control of my emotions like my emotions controlled me and um, my husband would always say like you're an adult you need to get that under control but like if you have in, like emotional issues and stuff like that you don't really un if you don't have those issues you don't really understand like how much they actually control you like it's very very hard to control those things especially if, you if you've learned to do that your whole t your whole life it kind of just becomes habitual um but after carnivore it was like i was able to control my emotions so much better and my i was becoming more confident and i was becoming more calm and i wasn't just getting angry at the stupidest stuff and i wasn't picking fights with my husband over stupid things like i was just much more chill and it was pretty drastic like it was pretty noticeable that there was a significant difference in my attitude and my personality and the, literally the only thing that i changed in my life was what i was eating so i know like people are like well correlation doesn't need full causation like, that was literally the only thing that changed in my life was my diet and all of these other things got better so i'm going to say that that's a pretty strong correlation <laughs> no yeah it's absolutely um and the other thing is you'll hear is well your anecdotal evidence doesn't mean anything which we can go down that road a little later um so i i feel the same way i have i have a history of sports and then personal training and then the fitness industry and did, you know, amateur bodybuilding for a while. So I have a lot of experience dieting, right? Whether it's, you know, trying to cut down for a show and being super strict about what I eat and counting out macros and my calories and all of that stuff, or whether it's just, you know, doing whole 30 or, or stuff like that. I've, I have a lot of experience doing that. Um, and, when I think of like what changed for me mental health wise, I don't think I can pinpoint anything as drastic, but I went from, so in my twenties, you know, I was pretty much in super good shape my entire twenties. Um, then, you know, got married, had kids, like it just starts, you know, you're working a lot and then you have to choose. You're like, am I going to choose the gym or am I going to choose to like go home and spend time 
with the family. And so like dad bod, right. And not terrible. Like we're talking, you know, an extra 20 pounds, 25 pounds, something like that. But for somebody who's been fairly in good shape, they're pretty much their whole adult life. Like that takes a toll. Um, and not only that, but it also, because you're not working out, like you have lower energy and then like, it just affects your sleep. And then it just the whole mental state. And so for me, my, my big aha moment with carnivore is I, I learned about it very similarly. Um, I did, are you familiar with whole 30? Have you ever done whole 30 before? I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is at all. <laughs> whole 30 is the most basic diet. And I, the premise behind it is, is totally fine. Um, whole 30 is you only eat whole foods for 30 days, right? So no processed foods, nothing that's prepared, nothing, right? But there's no restrictions within it. So chicken, rice, um, vegetables, fruit, like whatever it is, as long as it's whole. And I've, I've done that in the past and like had decent results. Um, and so I did it in conjunction with um, 75 hard and I stretched it out to 90 days and I lost weight, but I still felt terrible. Like every time I would eat, I would bloat. I didn't have any more energy. I didn't. And literally by the end of it, I was like, this is like stupid. Like This is the worst thing I've ever done. Like I just did this for 90 days, like without varying at all. And I don't feel any better. And so I put the weight right back on. And so I was in Vegas and got like Vegas was Vegas was fun, but I felt terrible the whole time. Right. Didn't like being at the pool bloated to the max the entire time. And I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta fix something. Like this is not okay. And my wife sent me uh, Paul Saladino's carnivore MDs profile. And she's like, all right, so the guy's a little kooky, but like, just check it out. And so for me, it was the instantly just not bloating, like removing vegetables and removing like the seed oils and not bloating after I ate was the biggest godsend I've ever had in my entire life. And then for me, it was just all downhill from there and then the mental and all that kind of stuff. Um, so my question is when you started, so you, you listen to the podcast, you do Carnivore 30, how strict were you with it? Like what, like there's carnivore and then there's like carnivore. Like I don't even look at a plant in the produce aisle. How, how super strict were you for 30 days? So for the first 30 days, I was like, loose carnivore or whatever you want to call it i still used pepper and seasonings and things like that and i would use uh like ketchup and a1 to eat steak because i never ate steak really in my life hold on did you say you put ketchup on steak yeah yeah <laughs> we're gonna document this i know yeah i did i did um but because I wasn't ever used to eating fatty red meat and it grossed me out. And uh, I could not, I would like gag if I saw like fat on the steak, which I think a lot of women can relate to. And my husband eventually, because I would cut the fat off and give it to him. And he eventually said, you need to figure this out because you're not eating carbs anymore. So you have to eat the fat. <laughs> so just deal with this and like learn how to like it. So um, I would eat it the like by putting sauce on it. And um, so I wasn't like super strict carnivore. I did what I had to do to get like the meat down. Um, but then eventually it got easier and I got more and more used to it. And I actually started to really like it. So then I didn't have to use those things. Uh, so yeah, in the beginning I used sauces and seasonings, but the food I was eating was carnivore. I wasn't eating um, vegetables or rice or anything like that. We were, I was just eating like meat and animal products. So do you think, had you gone super strict, like right out the gate, you only ate meat, salt, water, butter, right out of the gate, do you think you would have been able to last long enough in order to see benefit? Yeah, if I did it, uh, if I knew more about the importance of fat and if I was more strategic with like how I was getting fat, like if I was eating meat that I liked and adding butter, and cooking it in tallow and things like that, um, I think I would have been fine because I never had an issue sticking with diets. Like uh, mm -hmm. that was never a thing. Like I've always been the kind of person, like if I decide to do something, I do it. So so that was never a struggle. Like I knew I could do it. Um, and if I knew 
like just to add more butter to stuff instead of like having to put ketchup on a steak. Like I, I would have done that, but I, I didn't do, um, I didn't follow really anyone when I started. I didn't document it on social media when I started. I didn't do any sort of carnivore social media for two years um, while I was carnivore. Um, and the only person I knew that was carnivore was Sean Baker. Like I didn't know there was this whole community. So I didn't have all these like resources that people have now. Um, so yeah, I, did I answer your question? I think. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's, that's perfect. And the reason I ask it is because I've, when people ask me how to get started, I, I tell them there's, there's like two schools of thought. Um, there's the school of thought that you just need to rip the bandaid off and go for it. Right. Like you just need to get, basically just, you know, jump into the deep end and teach yourself how to swim. Um, I kind of went a different route and not necessarily because I didn't think I could do it, but because I wasn't fully sold on it. Um, my route was I would eat carnivore for my meals and I'm not really a snack person, but in the evenings, like after the kids go to bed, it would be, okay, maybe I'll have like a glass of wine and some chips or, you know, a beer and, you know, whatever. And not super consistently, but I wasn't trying to avoid it and it was after a couple months that i was like i'm actually like getting some pretty good results like maybe i should like go a little more into this and then that's when i started getting you know even better with the gut and you know some acne problems that i was having up along my hairline and you know i started regrowing a little bit like i'm still like i have male pattern baldness and you know, like the widow's peak but it started it stopped and then started to like fill back in just a little bit and all these things that I was like, I, what? That's like my diet. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. Like I have a nutrition background. I have a degree in sports medicine. Like that still did not make sense to me. I was like, there's no way that me just eating this is going to help with all this stuff. So when I, when I tell people, they're like, how do I start? My first thing is you just got to get rid of the processed foods, like drop the processed foods, drop the seed oils, focus on making your meals carnivore, and then like ease into it. Um, I think too many people think that all of these people have had good results on carnivore. Just one day wake up and go, I cleaned out my entire house. It's only steaks for the rest of my life. And I think that scares people. They're like, I can't do that. Like, there's no way I could do that. Yeah. Um, so I, I love hearing how people started and, you know, if, because I, cause I'll get into that. Like you'll see some of my videos. I'm a little on the looser end, like a little towards animal base. Like I'll use spices. And if, a, you know, if I'm doing a recipe and it's got peppers or whatever, like I might use those and I, I'll get that. They're like, garlic powder is not carnivore. And I'm like, okay, if that's what our contention is on the diet, then you better be super strict on everything else. And then we can talk about garlic powder. Yeah. Right. That it, me much, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And so I, I always refer back and I'm like, go check my bio. It says carnivore animal based, like however you want to dissect that up. Let's, you know, we can go with it. Um, okay. So you did it for a month. Obviously like you're like, I got to keep doing this since then. Have you been like straight carnivore? Have you like varied off of it? Tried other stuff, tried incorporating things back in. Yeah, so after days, I, kind of went more loose and we would have like cheat meals on the weekends and I would like drink alcohol and have like pizza, a gluten-free pizza. Cause I was gluten-free for thir 10 years before I went carnivore. So that is an absolute non-negotiable for me. Like I will never eat gluten again, but, um, so yeah, I would have like cheat meals on the weekends. And then I noticed that my health issues were starting to come back. Like I would like feel just like not as good um so then i decided like okay i need to go strict and then my husband still stayed like kind of loose because he never really had any significant health issues so he was super motivated to stay strict um so i've been pretty much more strict i'll have things here and there um because again i don't struggle with food addiction so i don't really proclaim that um a lot because i do have a large Wing and I don't want to like tell people like it's okay to have this and that every now and then especially because so many people struggle with food addiction so like I I don't 
um, advertise that as loudly. Um, but I do will sometimes have um, non carnivore foods, but like very like I'll have a bite of something or I'll like taste something my husband's eating. Like it won't be like these copious amounts of plants plant foods. Um, but the, I just want to say like if you struggle with food addiction, don't do that because it might like like send you down the wrong path. So just be aware of what you are capable of uh, if you can like moderate these foods. Um, so yeah, I, um, but every time, like if I eat something not carnivore, it like doesn't make me feel great. So it's like not ever really, it's like not worth it. It's like, was that, uh, whatever, like, was that thing like worth it? No, I'll, I'd rather have a steak. Like a steaks are delicious. They're satisfying. They don't make me feel like crap. Um, they don't make me break out. Like I'm tired of having like skin issues, you know? So like, I'll just, I'll stick with my steak. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I totally get it. I, uh, and I've had people that are like, there's no way you can tell, like, there's no way you can tell if you eat, like, don't be afraid of eating some plants or like, you're not going to be, you know, freak out if you have a little bit of seed oils. And I'm like, okay, but I can't, like, there are certain things where, you know, I'll go out to, you know, to eat, right. And order a steak and steak comes out, eat just the steak. And immediately after I'm like, okay, like you feel, you off. can't, you can't tell me there's not a difference yeah. because I can put my steak knowing exactly how I cook it against somebody else's steak, not knowing how they cook it. And if I feel different, like there's a difference. My husband's coworkers had like a party and they, my husband kind of told them that I could only eat meat. So they were really nice and they got these hamburgers and made them. And I don't know what they did to them, but that whole night I was like throwing up all night and it was literally just hamburger and it wasn't undercooked or anything like that. So I think that there was seed oils in them. And whenever I go to a restaurant and I eat a steak that is cooked in seed oils, the next day without fail, I get a breakout every single time. So I always know if there are seed oils in something because it makes me break out within 24 hours. It's so it definitely you definitely feel a difference and know when you're eating like clean food versus not. <laughs> yeah, it's and I think people it's hard for people to realize that. Um like I said it was hard for me to realize that when, you know, looking at at carnivore MD stuff and you know, plants are trying to kill you and all of this stuff. And I was like, okay, there's no way, like my entire life I have tried and forced myself to eat vegetables. Like I was the king of making vegetables and then having to throw them out because they sat in the fridge for so long because I could not bring myself to eat them, especially reheated, like could not bring myself to eat them. And that was honestly like my first draw to it. I was like, wait a minute, I don't have to eat chicken breast, ground Turkey and vegetables anymore. I was like, you're telling me like, and I, I do eat chicken sometimes, right? But I've spent so much of my life eating plain chicken breast with a broccoli stir fry. And it's just like, you know, in the Tupperware and I want to die. And so that was my first, and it was, it was instant. Like as soon as I got rid of the vegetables, I was like, wait a minute, you can eat and not immediately bloat. I was like, that's a thing. Like you're telling me that's a real thing because for my entire life, that I just thought that was normal, right? You eat, you blow, you wear your stretchy pants to Thanksgiving. Like that's just a part of normal life. And I don't, I wouldn't even tell people that I was bloated, right? Cause I didn't think that I had a bloating problem. So yeah, it, I think once you go down that road and you start to understand like how different foods affect you, I think it's like completely eye opening. Yeah. So pivoting, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm not scared to eat plants. Like I don't want to, like, cause I hate You're terrified. Yeah, like, you're, why are you so scared to eat plants? It's like, I will eat plants, like, if I want to. Like, I, it's that I don't want to eat these things. I want to eat a steak. Like, if you put plants in front of me and a steak in front of me, I'm going to choose the steak. Like, that's just a no-brainer. And it's like, people are like, how did you give it up? And it's like, really? You're struggling to give up broccoli? Like Super you... easy. Yeah. Like, so it's like, I'm not scared to eat plants. Like, and I'm not saying I'll never reincorporate plant foods back into my diet, like in significant amounts, but like, it's just, it's just not, 
you just I don't know it's just why why do I need to why don't like I don't want to <laughs> you know I don't and I feel it's like people bully you into like having to eat plants and it makes so much, no sense to me at all that it's like just let me eat meat and like eat the plants if you want to eat the plants like go away <laughs> yeah no for sure um it's like it's like drinking at a party to me like people are like get hammered and they're like oh why aren't you drinking like what's happening not that i go to parties like i'm old i don't <laughs> been to a party in years but it's it's that same concept and they're like why aren't you drinking i'm like well because it's really not going to be that fun and i'm going to feel terrible the next day and when i wake up feeling okay and you're you know passed out at 10 a.m and have a worse hangover like that's why like why would i eat something that i legit feel worse after eating and if you ever do eat it like i know the risks now and i know like you i have to like know that i'm gonna deal with something later like so it's like okay on new year's like i'll have a like sake or something with my husband and then it's like but i'm not gonna feel my best tomorrow so like you have to like you know now whereas before like you were saying it's like you didn't really know you were bloated you didn't really know that you felt like crap all the time and i think that's a really big motivating factor for a lot of people with this diet too is because you you don't actually understand how crappy you feel until you do this and you feel amazing and then you're like oh wow maybe i should cut some of that stuff out of my diet so it's like in the future if you ever do like have those things that you know don't make you feel your best it's like you're in control and you make that decision you're like okay i'm gonna do this um because i'm gonna have like yolo you know like <laughs> i'm gonna have some fun but tomorrow i'm gonna do it like regret it you know so it's like you have to like consciously make those decisions instead of just going through life like a zombie on like a bunch of medications you know <laughs> yeah and it's once you once you realize that like once you realize how good you can feel um it is that you you make that conscious choice you're like do i want to feel good for the five minutes that i'm eating this right now or do i want to feel good for the next 24 hours after or feel terrible and you realize that the trade-off's not worth it um which i think at the core and i think more people need to view carnivore this way is it's like an elimination diet, right? You literally are eliminating everything that can possibly make you feel terrible for anybody out there who has like meat allergies or something like that, like that excluded. And then you're realizing how you should actually feel and you shouldn't feel sluggish and I didn't sleep well. And like, I just bleh all the time. Um, yeah. So I think that's a, a super important point. Now, the other reason, so I started following you when I first started my carnivore um, page. I started it, I was carnivore for about six months and then started it back in February. And one of the things I love about your page is you do not shy away from, uh, I believe, leaf nibblers was the term that you used in one of your videos, <laughs> which I loved. <laughs> that might need to be a t-shirt. Uh, you don't shy away from that. and I call it steering into the curve, right? Like anytime you do something that's going to offend or get people to, to react that way, you can either hide behind it and just ignore it, or you can steer into the curve. Have you always been that way with carnivore or how was it when you first started, you first started getting a little bit of a following and then you got people that are like, you're going to die because you eat butter. In my own, whole entire life, I've always I've never been scared of conflict or been scared of like being controversial or people thinking I'm weird. I've always been kind of really outspoken with everything I believe in, so I'm used to like having butting heads with people, um, and I enjoy it a lot. I I'm the youngest child too, so I'm used to getting like bullied and picked on, um, which I think also helped. Um, toughen me up for social media and I um was like the fat kid with acne so I got bullied a lot as a kid so that toughened me up too so um I've I think social media is just so much fun and I love I absolutely love triggering people because if you get that triggered, like it's probably should be like a red flag to you. Like, Hey, maybe I should work on some things. <laughs> so I, I, I like, am, I hope to be a wake up call for some people. Like if my content is triggering you, you might need to like figure some things out and get off social media. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love staring into that curve <laughs> every time, every time I can. 
um, and just seeing uh, what happens. And it's social media, like controversy gets popular. And I know like a, I get so much crap from people telling me like I'm a bitch and I'm too mean and I need to be nicer. And it's like there are plenty of proper, nice female carnivores that don't <laughs> ruffle any feathers and are just dainty, perfect, delicate little creatures that are, if that's the content you like, they are out there. You can go follow them. That's not my personality. That's never been my personality. I've always been loud and stand up for what I believe in and am not afraid to upset people so that that is who i am and i will never change <laughs> and i i love that so when i first started i was like okay i'm not gonna be like controversial i'm not gonna you know i'm gonna avoid because i'm i'm very similar um and i have especially on social media i have a lot of views that will get people riled up and so i was like i'm just gonna like lay low and you know, just, you know, post my stuff. And so I did for a while and I was like, okay. And like, I would be like, oh, okay. Like we're just, I'm just going to follow the, follow the plan. Right. And it was actually Twitter, right. Which at the time was like my least popular platform. I just, I kind of obligatory had a Twitter. Like I was like, this is dumb. I almost thought about getting rid of it. And then I started like poking a little bit. I was like, I'm going to go like, We'll stir some stuff up. And then like obviously started getting some responses. And then I realized how unhinged some of these people are. And I was like, why are you so offended by my name? Like my name is carnivore. And one of the most common ones I would get, they'd be like, Oh, you're a lion, huh? You're a, yeah. You catch it with your teeth. Yeah. You just eat it like that. And I finally made a video and I was like, you guys are confused about the classification of animal carnivores and a diet like y'all need to chill always been like take it up with the person that named it i didn't name the diet like go complain to sean baker not me <laughs> yeah right like you're you're literally complaining about the name of a diet yeah. that's like if somebody's like oh you're keto you're you're actually a ketone <laughs> Come on. like and so that's when i just went full bore and my twitter like for me blew up and I was like, okay, like maybe I can. And so for a while I kept that as like my alter ego. I was like, Twitter is where I ruffle feathers. And then Instagram's where I'm like positive and, you know, and then eventually I was like, nah, like if people don't want to follow me because they don't like what I have to say, then don't follow me. Um, that's when I started like getting a little more aggressive with the shirts and like a little more aggressive with the, you know, eat an effing steak videos and all that kind of stuff. And it does. There's some people who are like, man, I wish you wouldn't have done that. And I was like, oh, well, I'm sorry. Like, that's literally what I say all day when I read these comments. I'm like, man, your life sucks. You need to eat a steak because you are super mad about what I'm doing. And you took the time to come to my page and comment on it. So, yeah, I'm going to stir you up a little bit because like the conflict, I enjoy seeing how low people will stoop into the stuff that they'll put out there on the Internet. I'm like, you just wished colon cancer on me. <laughs> like, do you understand that? Like, you just told me that you, you cannot wait until I die of heart, heart disease. And I'm like, just to and, and I know about a diet, like just to be right about a stranger's diet, you want them to die. It's like, how unhinged is that? And it's like, I'm over here eating a steak and you're like, die. <laughs> and you think you're like, on like the moral high ground like that's so interesting <laughs> i know and so i was like okay so i'll i'll just try and spin up people and see you know each time somebody would post something like that i'm like there's another one there's another one what the, you guys are crazy and so like seeing your videos and seeing you respond to those comments like i die every time because not so much on instagram like i haven't had too many people infiltrate my instagram but all the other ones like youtube and uh twitter especially like people love to find that and just attack you and i'm like man like you guys need to get a life because this is crazy you literally scroll social media hoping to find somebody that you can get all riled up about <laughs> is, is that without people like that 
our content want to be as popular. So it's, I'm grateful for those un unhinged people. And it absolutely, one of my biggest pet peeves is when people who are meat eaters tell me, uh, I, this, this bugs me more than when vegans troll me because I don't care about vegans, but, um, when meat eaters are like, just ignore the comments and they, they tell me just ignore it. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to, I'm going to put on full blast how insane these people are. So we can remind everyone how insane they are. Like, I'm not going to just ignore these comments because if we just turn a blind eye to all of these, like insane ideologies they're just going to continue to scam more people because they're still putting out all of their dumb shit on social media so i am going to blast that out for people so we can be reminded of how dumb it is you know i absolutely hate being told to just ignore comments it's i hate it like i would rather have a vegan wish colon cancer on me than someone tell me to just ignore a comment <laughs> Well, and then and then you get the oh you're triggered by that and like bro there's nothing you can say that's going to trigger me like yeah. there is literally nothing anybody can say on social media that's going to get me upset mm -hmm. I find this hilarious and I'm just trying to see how far you'll go with this mm -hmm. so yeah I'm going to give you dry little comments and like oh. poke back fun at you because I want to see how far you'll go I love trolling people I love and one one of my biggest um what I love too is when people are like your whole entire personality is your diet yes. it's like it's like. That's the point of social media is to like have a niche. Like, <laughs> like people follow me because of this. Like I'm not trying to like put my whole entire life on social media. Of course, like my whole entire social media is my diet. Like, hello. <laughs> or when people are like, you only are doing this to get attention. That's the point of social media. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I literally got that comment on YouTube today. They're like, imagine making your whole personality about a diet. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna like post all of my personal stuff on here like i have a private one that like my mom views and i keep it because when i get rid of it my mom goes are you okay i'm like yeah mom i'm fine but yeah of course my whole like that's the whole point of this page is to promote the diet and of course i'm going to embrace that like this isn't like hey i'm a celebrity come check out what i do on a daily basis it's no like i'm advocating this diet i'm trying to get people interested in this diet so yes on social media that is my personality shocker <laughs> like like real life like that's what it, it's insane people really cannot separate social media from real life and that's really sad i mean it, it's good for me because it helps my social media but i feel bad for people who do that but oh well some people i also have a very like um i i'm not empathetic really like I, I i kind of am but at the end of the day i'm like some people are going to be saved some people aren't like that's how it goes so like i'm not like oh i wish i could just save all the vegans in the world and blah 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 <laughs> i feel bad for them but like if you're stupid enough to do that that's not my problem you know i'm very like oh well <laughs> no i I'm, I'm the same way it's it's 2023 and you literally have access to almost all of the information that's ever been published in the history of the world and you can't claim ignorance on anything, yeah. right? Like there's there's no excuse for any ignorance on any of it. You're gonna do it, like people are gonna do it and they're gonna show that ignorance. But, you know, just being exposed to it, like you then make the choice, am I gonna like look at this further or am I just gonna discount it and like start ranting on social media about how some study from the 1970s says you're gonna die of heart disease. And so, yeah, it's, that's definitely the route I went. Um, my crowning moment is when PETA blocked me on Twitter. I was like, we made it. And I, I would get that. They're like, you pay $8 for a blue check mark. And my standard response was, it's so I show up on the top of every single post for PETA that I comment on. And it is totally worth it. <laughs> like, Twitter is, so I don't know how Twitter works. Twitter is like Wild West. Like, the thing with Twitter is it's so easy to just get out information. Like you don't have to create anything. I can just type and send it. Um, it's kind of like statuses used to be on Facebook, right? Like people would just incoherent ramble and it would be out there for the world to see. Well, that's Twitter. I mean, Instagram, I have to like actually create something or I have to make a, um, you know, a, a video or a picture. I have to put some effort into it. And Twitter is all about, you know, people that don't follow you being exposed to your content. So like my reach is 
you know, infinitely greater on Twitter, even if my followers aren't super high. And so, and then the, the way the Twitter algorithm is, is once you start engaging with that like genre, you just see it all the time. Like I post a couple times on PETA's pages and then all of a sudden random vegans are showing up on my timeline and I'm like, well, it's fate. I gotta, gotta talk to them too. And so then it just spirals and you can spend all day on there. Um, not the best use of time all the time, but it, it was fun. as like my release from like pretending to, you know, be like this on all my other social media platforms. So it's fun. I enjoy it. Uh, I love seeing the videos, especially like the butter ones. I can't do butter. I, I tried it. I made a video. I've got a video I'm going to post um, about eating stick of butter, like the texture and the sliminess. Like I just can't do it. Like room temperature or cold? Cold. Oh, okay. Because some people do like room temperature and I, um, that doesn't taste as good to me. Like it has to be hard and cold. Yeah. Like I just, like I tried. I'm like, and maybe I'll like try in the future, but getting fat's never been an issue for me. So I'm not like super into doing it. Like I'll cook with butter. I'll put it on steak. I'll do whatever. Um, so I don't even do like eat it that often. And I don't really like put butter on my steaks or anything. Cause I think they just taste really good with just salt. But every once in a while, if I'm like just hungry, but not hungry enough to eat a steak, or if I like just did a workout and I just want something, but I don't want a full meal. Like I'll eat butter, but it's not like people like blow it up and make it seem like I'm eating like entire sticks a day. It's like, no, I do it like once in a while when I want like a snack, but I don't want, I don't have like beef jerky made or I don't have any leftovers or anything. Like I just will go grab butter. So it's like, it's not like a staple in my diet, but I definitely will do it if I want to. <laughs> and I think those are the funniest comments. Like, this chick eats bacon and butter. There's no way she's this weight mm -hmm. or there's no way that she eats that. And I'm like, bro, like you're so backwards right now. <laughs> so then seeing you just like munch on a, on a stick of butter is like, that's like top tier for me. I love it. I making the butter videos to, to just trigger people. Cause that one definitely always does so well. Like they do, they always do so well because people hate seeing people eat butter. <laughs> I, I know it's, and like, part of me understands like growing up, it was like eat margarine instead of butter because of the fat content and which is like the grossest thing in the world. Um, and so like part of me gets it, but part of me is also like, how can it be 2023 and you haven't questioned anything that you've learned about foods to eat and nutrition and like it's just people are on like how many a percentage of americans are on at least one prescription medication it's like 60 something percent or something yeah like that. and my I, another favorite comment of mine is like well what are your qualifications like <sighs> It's like you said, it's 2023. Like, I don't need a medical to degree to, like, know what nutrition is best for me. Like, all of the information that doctors are getting is available for us, too. Like, as long as I can read, I I can understand what doctors understand. Like, I'm not going to be able to, like, do a surgery or fix a broken bone or things like that, like acute medicine. But, like, my nutrition, like, you, you think I need, a, like, a medical degree to know what's best what food is best for me to eat? Like that's absolutely insane. Well, that, that's, what's crazy is so having, I'm not pretending I'm a doctor. I'm not pretending I have a degree that's close to doctor, but I have a degree in the medical field and the majority, unless you go, you know, an actual like MD, the majority of your, your training is exposing to it and then teaching you how to find information. Like nobody expects you to know all of it. Like no doctor goes out there and goes, yes, I'm going to recite every single thing that there is to know about everything. It's, you know, your information. Um, most of it's like some sort of practicing, like whether you're a surgeon or you know how to, you know, deal with people and treat people. And then you know how to access information. Like that's all it is. And so for people to think that just because you're a doctor, you inherently are taught all this information, go look at a a curriculum for an MD program and see how many nutrition classes there are. Like most of them have none. 
and it's the you know the little bit of nutrition or you know a little bit that they cover in you know pharmacology and how that interacts and biology and NP that you take as an undergrad that's the basis for most of your nutrition information and so when i see people that's the other one favorite of vegan is studies like well look at this study look at this study studies are the craziest thing in the world to me because I can pull up a study right now. This is a true study. Out of Chicago, they followed men who exercised, and they found that white males are 50% more likely to develop heart disease if they exercise for seven and a half hours or more per week, as opposed to black men. Let's never exercise ever again. Like, wait, what? Like, you're telling me that exercise is now racist? Like, and the yeah. more I exercise, the what like or the study that came out that said coca-cola increases testosterone when they gave coca-cola to rats like it increased their testosterone levels i'm like oh my gosh so that that's been my other one is like these studies because for the most part i can read a study and i can access the information and i can like look at all of their their results and for people to just blindly follow these headlines like the last couple on meat Right, like you're fifty percent more likely to get diabetes if you eat meat. And that was the entire headline, and that's the entire abstract, and it's and people just well, doctors told us that. So that's that's what it is. And so it, it that's my other favorite one is to poke at. And then eventually I just stop because I know what studies you're gonna bring up and I know how flawed they are and it's not gonna be a productive conversation. That's why it's just like, do it for yourself and see what, like, I don't need a study to tell me that my mental health improved and that I lost weight and that I, uh, my skin cleared up and my gut healed. Like, I don't need a study to tell me that all of those things happened for me. Like, I tried this, it worked, and I'm sticking with it. So, I don't know. That's like, that's the people who, who are so in their head of like, I need evidence before I do this. It's like then do what you want like i don't care like if you some people are going to try it some people aren't some people are going to die of heart disease some people aren't like it's none of my business <laughs> yeah and you know i tell people it's you know having a you know working out a lot and having a you know kind of a sports background and doing all that kind of stuff you hear from every orthopedic surgeon in the world listen to your body right if it hurts don't do it but if it hurts that means there's probably something wrong if it did hurt and now it doesn't hurt, then you probably did something along the way that was right. Except for when it comes to nutrition, where they're like, you feel better, your mental health is better, your skin cleared up, you sleep better, you have more energy. Nope, don't do that. Reincorporate all those foods because 20 years down the road, you have a 1.2% higher absolute risk of developing heart disease. Based on a study where they lumped lasagna in with red meat. Bingo. <laughs> And so I'm like, some people you can't, you can't save. Um, my whole goal is just to get information out there like this and let people do what they want. Yeah. But it, it, it always, I always love seeing the people that don't back down from all the comments and don't, cause I know people get comments and most people you see, you think they have this, you know, fairy tale carnivore experience and there's no hate and all of that. And then you start it and you realize how unhinged a lot of them are and the crazy stuff that you get. So yeah, that's, people tell me to ignore the comments. It's like, um, I don't think you understand like the comments that I get on a daily basis. Like, no, no, thank you. Like you have not been exposed to, to hate, like real hate, unless you've like had one of your videos go like viral for like eating butter and then people are just wishing death on you and stuff and it's just it's so sad it's it's but like i don't know it's i'm gonna keep doing what i'm doing people don't like it they don't they don't have to follow me but i i like what i'm doing that's i think that's the most important part is i'm having fun <laughs> no and i i love it like i find a bunch of entertainment because on a much smaller scale i can relate to it uh and it also it opens the eyes because before starting this, I didn't realize that I pick on vegans a lot, but that's most of the people that decide they want to comment. Uh, I didn't realize that they were so outspoken. Like two years ago, if you had asked me, like, what do vegans do? I'd be like, I don't know. They eat a bunch of plants. Like, 
I, I couldn't have told you that there was activists out there, you know, pouring blood on themselves or pretending to be babies wrapped in, you know, packaging and like all this crazy stuff. And then when I did see that, I was like, oh, that's, that's just a few nut jobs out there. And then you start interacting with people and it's not one person and it's not two people. It's, you know, 10 people every time you post something or, you know, all of this stuff. And you're like, whoa, like this is, there's a lot of them. And I know social media amplifies it, right? Like most people stay off social media if they don't want to be somewhat inflammatory. But yeah, like you exposing that I think is good for people to see, especially when they're starting because like they might face that and they might face that in real life. And so giving them an idea I think is helpful. And I laugh my ass off when I watch it. <laughs> Is there outspoken? Why shouldn't I be outspoken? Like I'm, I'm, I, this changed my life. So like, why shouldn't I share this with people? It's like, if people, people can listen to their story and listen to my story and decide to choose vegan or carnivore or something else. But like, that's not going to stop me from sharing my story. So it's like, I, I don't understand the, when people criticize of things like that, of like, just let me share my story, like, or move along. Like it's social media. You can click off scroll like you don't have to see me you can block me and then you'll never see my face again like there there's ways around this yeah exactly <laughs> that's my favorite is when they consistently especially on twitter it's easy to keep up with somebody without actually following them and so i'd get people that commented every single post without following me i'm like okay like you're just like my resident troll that's just gonna live there all right last one uh, before we wrap this up from a real life perspective did you, how did you deal with family, friends when you told them what you were doing? You know, you got these results and I'm sure people were like, Hey, what are you doing? Like, what have you done to make these changes? What was the response when you told them the diet that you were on? Okay with it. Like they probably thought I was crazy. They say they don't, but they probably did. Um, and it took them like a year of me doing it before they started to actually understand that I, what I was doing was helping me and that they should probably try it too. Um, so my parents, like no one flat out, like was rude or anything in real life. And, and typically in real life, and I'm not as aggressive in real life. Like I'm actually very, um, reserved with, I do not advertise that I'm carnivore. I try to keep it a secret. Um, and, if people find out and they genuinely ask me questions and they want to know more, I'm more than happy to share that with them. But if people um, find out and they're kind of like, you can tell that they just kind of want to argue, I just stop. Like in real life, I, I, I don't think, like I have fun on social media, but like I'm not going to waste my time in real life like arguing with someone because you can immediately tell if they're like open to it or not. Um, so yeah, that's, I kind of deal with it. That's how I deal with it. It's like, if someone seems open and genuine about it, I'll, I'll talk to them more about it. If they don't, then I'm just like, okay. And stop talking to them. Um, so I'm very, um, like black and white in real life, I guess. No, I, I'm, I'm a lot the same way, uh, from my stuff. You'd think that I wear like stuff like this 24 seven all day. Uh, I'll wear some of my stuff out, but I learned a long time ago that people are insane and in a face-to-face -face interaction, I'm not trying to aggravate any of the insane that might be out there. Uh, social media, that's fine. Like I'm, I'm not afraid of somebody, right? But I'm also not going to, most of the time I have like my kids or something with me. I'm not trying to start something with somebody. I don't want some vegan, you know, coming up and freaking out because I have, you know, an inflammatory shirt on. So I'm, I'm very much the same way. Uh, my family knows that I've done pretty restrictive diets in the past. So to them, it's just like, oh, it's just something else. Like, no, he's, he's a little out there, but you know, it's okay. Uh, but I, I do think it's a lot of people are worried about that when they start something that, because it seems crazy. Like when you first tell somebody that you're just going to eat a bunch of meat, not needing vegetables, and you know, all this stuff is trying to kill you. They're like, people are going to think I'm insane. So I, I do think it's good for people to understand that most people don't really care. Like they're like, do your thing, do your diet, whatever you want. If it's working great. Awesome. You know, 
like tears. If it makes you feel better and you know, like that's why well, the one thing I tell people to do when they first start carnivore is research. Like researching is so important and reading um, like carnivore cure and carnivore diet and why we get sick and the big fat surprise and vegetarian myth. Like there's so many good books out there that you can give you so much good information so that when people do like you have to know why you're this is like a good thing for you and what is happening inside of you because if you just do this diet and you get some good results and then you're uh, someone that you really look up to and trust tells you you're gonna die then you're gonna probably start to question what you're doing but if you have like if you research and you really understand what is going on and why carnivore is helping you and why an elimination diet can be so beneficial for so many issues then when someone says hey you're killing yourself you can just say thanks but i think i'm going to stick with this because it's working for me and you can say that like confidently without having to like get into like a fight or anything like that you can just say i appreciate your concern but i'm going to just stick with this so, like so i think researching helps build confidence so much in real life like it on social media you, i can just troll people like when someone's like what's your source it's like, <laughs> like sorcerer it didn't happen yeah, you're not my teacher don't give me homework like go find your own source like Prove your you, work yeah like if you don't like this go away but like in real life um like you can you it having that information gives you like so much more confidence in what you're doing and in so then when people start to tell you that you're like eh, i don't really like I don't trust that. Like, I, I know what A, B, C, and D, like, this is not going to kill me. And, like, if your doctor tells you your cholesterol is too high, you can, you can say, like, actually, this, 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 and this. So, yeah, research is the best way to combat people in real life. <laughs> that is excellent advice. D-Y-O-R, do your own research. That's a great point to end it on. Um, well, Jess, thank you very much for coming on here. Uh, your social media handles, jesslyn.randall on Instagram. Yes. And then do you have any other social medias? Yeah, but I'm not super active anywhere else. Like, I'm not trying to grow those ones. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll include a link for those on YouTube. I'll include a link down um, for those on Spotify or your favorite podcast streaming platform. It is jesslyn.randall on Instagram. I highly encourage you to go follow um, a lot of informative stuff like the chicken nugget recipe you just posted, um, as well as some entertainment and brings to light some, some issues that you might deal with on the carnivore diet. Uh, thank you guys for listening. And until next time, have a good one.